Hey guys, I'm Stefan Kesting. I run grapplers.com and today, three methods to make yourself really heavy on your opponents. This is about generating that soul crushing, breath stealing pressure that you can sometimes tap people out with, even without a submission. So there are three basic methods to make yourself heavier on your opponent. There's pounds, there's PSI, and there's placement. We're gonna talk about each of those. Pounds. Basically, the more weight you put on your opponent, the heavier it's going to feel for them. This is pretty obvious. Now, I'm not talking about gaining 50 pounds during COVID. I'm not talking about jacking up and becoming super buff by taking a ton of steroids. I'm talking about using the weight that you have effectively and efficiently. So, this is my opponent, and I'm here. And I'm in kind of a standard side control. How much weight am I putting on my opponent? I'm about 210 pounds. But in that basic side control, there's maybe 10 pounds from my chest on here, and maybe 10, 15 pounds from my shoulder on here. So that's somewhere between 185 pounds to 190 pounds that are unaccounted for. Where is that weight going? The answer is into the floor. If I'm here and I'm holding, most of the weight is on my knees and the so the, the weight that I have is going down into the floor. The weight is also going down, roll my opponent away, through my forearm, through my elbow, through my hands, through this elbow, and my feet. Everywhere that's touching the ground is increasing weight. If I want to make myself heavier, I gotta take things off the ground. To start with, the knees. The knees are really big places where you lose a ton of your weight, your, your effective weight. So if I go here, I just lift my knees up slightly off the ground so they can move. Or as I like to think of it, put a piece of paper under the knees. You automatically increase the weight on your opponent. It has to go somewhere. Now you could be here, you could be here, you can have one leg up, but the point is not to be resting a ton of weight on that knee. Same goes for the arms. If I'm here on my opponent, there's a big difference between being here and being just a little bit off the ground. I'll bring my opponent back. So we're here. I want to make myself heavier. I lift my knees off the ground. I pull up with my hands. Instead of my, my elbow being flat on the mat, it's up. It can move. So depending on the leg configuration that you're going to use, you have one leg straight, you have the other leg straight, you have both legs straight, you've got a really good cross space. And I'm increasing the weight that's on my partner. You can also increase your pounds a different way by actually pulling. If I've got a good grip with the cross face, my hands linked, I can pull. This pulls me onto him and effectively increases the amount of pressure on him, increases my amount of weight. It doesn't really increase my weight, but the effect is the same. With the gi, this is even easier. The classic pressure position in jiu-jitsu is the knee mount. So I'll take my gi, I'll just feed it here. Imagine if I popped up in the knee mount and grabbed both lapels and just pull here and turn them into a banana. Obviously, that's increasing the amount of weight. If I grab the belt and the lapel, that's another classic uh, control position. We're here and I'm pulling. I grab the lapel and I grab the sleeve and I pull. Again, I'm pulling myself down onto him. I'm adding 30, 40, 50 pounds. So method one of creating more pressure is by putting more pounds on him. The big thing there, take the weight off the floor, put it onto him. Method two, PSI. So there's a total amount of force that you're putting on him, but then you can put it on him in a more broad, or a more focused way. It's the amount of weight per unit area. So if I'm here, I'm just lying on my opponent, say I'm doing everything right, my knees are just off the floor, I'm not bleeding a weight anywhere, he might still be fairly comfortable because there's some weight on my shoulder, there's some weight on my left pec, there's some weight on my sternum, there's some weight on this pec. Basically, this is a nice broad area to be putting weight on him. Imagine having you know, a 45 pound, couple of 45 pound plates sitting on your lap. Yeah, it's not comfortable, but it wouldn't hurt. Now imagine having 90 pounds 
a 90 pound barbell sitting right on your sternum. That's going to be much more focused. The amount of weight per number of square inches, your PSI, your pounds per square inch, is going to be going up. So if I want to increase the feeling of soul crushing sensation, I don't want to have a big broad area. How do I do this? Well, if I'm a catch wrestler, I'm going to use my forearm. Probably just going to move in most cases. So I might do something like knee mount. So I'm in knee mount. I'm observing the first principle in that this foot is off the floor and that this foot is mobile and very light. There's not a lot of weight on this knee, meaning that all my weight is here. But just as importantly, I'm not using my whole leg. I'm not using my whole body. I'm using a reasonably concentrated area of my knee. And in some variations of the knee mount, I might be using my whole shin. But still, this is a reasonably small area to put something like 190 pounds on him. And believe me, that really sucks. To use a non-knee mount example, to use a side mount example, I might go from being flat with the weight spread out over my whole chest to turning. So it's just the edge of my ribs. The edge of my ribs are a more small area than my whole entire chest. Or alternately, if I have that cross face here, instead of putting some weight on my chest and some weight in with the shoulder, I might pivot here so that all my weight is going just through my shoulder. It's the same amount of weight, just focused on a small area, much more uncomfortable. The third method is placement. So where do you put the weight? Obviously, any weight is good weight, but imagine 90 pounds on your thigh. It's not going to be pleasant. Now imagine 90 pounds on your neck. So obviously, placing weight on the neck really amplifies the effect of that weight. And the second really good place to put weight is right on the diaphragm. So your solar plexus is here. Everyone find your solar plexus. There's a big muscle that transects your torso. It divides your lungs and your heart from all your guts and your stomach and all that stuff. That muscle, when it contracts, you breathe in. So that muscle which runs here is responsible for most of your effective breathing. Right? Abdominal breathing is more effective and there's a limit, only a limited amount of chest breathing you can do. If you can put a ton of weight right across the diaphragm, so essentially at the level of the solar plex, you stifle that person's ability to breathe. So now we're talking about a position like Kezagatami or Ushiro Kezagatami or uh, Kuzure Kezagatami in, in Judo. Basically, that's when I switch to this form of side mount. Let's go over those three principles and review really quickly. Number one, what am I doing wrong? Well, my ankle's on the ground, my shin's on the ground, my knee's on the ground, my thigh's on the ground, my hip's on the ground, my knee's on the ground, my foot's on the ground, my elbow's on the ground. All that has to stop. So I have to flex ever so slightly. There. Now only my feet are on the ground. It's a bit of work for me, but it's jujitsu. You're going to have to spend some energy. So I'm flexing and I'm bridging up slightly just here. Now, there's nothing on the ground anymore, more weight on him. Also, this arm came up. If I've got an underhook, if I've got a sleeve grip, I'm gonna be pulling. I'm gonna be amplifying my weight. So that's pounds, PSI. I have turned my body here. I'm using the edge of my ribs, and I'm using that on his diaphragm. So that's placement. So that's why, <laughs> say we've got a Kazakatami position, the headlock, I've got the arm, and I'm here, I'm pulling. It really sucks. My hips are off the ground. All my weight's on him. I'm pulling. It's a very powerful pulling position. Adds another 50 pounds. And I've got the edge of my ribs digging into his diaphragm, making it impossible to breathe. So there. That's how to make yourself much heavier without spending that much more energy or spending that much more time at the buffet. If you're new to jiu-jitsu, go check out grapplearts.com book. There's a beginner guide there that's really useful. If you're not brand new to jiu-jitsu, go check out grapplearts.com slash master app. That's the Grapple Arts BJJ master app. There are more than 700 minutes of free instructional on there right now, including an entire tutorial on back attacks. You've got links to my podcast, you've got links to my blog. And if you like what you see, you can then buy additional instructional, but there's no obligation. Even if you just go for the free version, there's a ton of good value. All right, guys. Good luck with thinking about this and good luck to applying it when you get back to the mats. Let's...